I promised you a conversation about uh, Love Island because uh, Ofcom, the media regulator, has uh, something to say about how programmes like that uh, work. Here's how The Guardian's reporting it. British TV and radio stations will be explicitly required to protect the welfare, well-being and dignity of individuals who take part in their programmes under proposals that could radically change how reality TV is made in the UK. The media regulator Ofcom said it was proposing to add two rules to the existing broadcasting code to protect members of the public who take part in programmes in an announcement timed to coincide with the final of this summer's series of Love Island. In addition to requiring producers to take due care to protect the dignity of participants, broadcasters will also have to ensure members of the public are not, quote, caused unjustified distress or anxiety by taking part in programmes or by the broadcast of these programmes. Martin Campbell is a media advisor and was chief advisor to Ofcom, which uh, regulates British broadcasters, including LBC. Uh, Martin, welcome. Uh, What do you make of these changes? Um, Not very much, to be honest, Eddie. I don't think they're going to make a lot of difference. The Guardian say they will. I don't don't think they will. I mean, there are already rules in force, but the, the problem is they require TV companies to use common sense. And there's a bit of a contradiction here because, as you said, the new rules talk about... Um, due care being taken of the welfare of people. So, of course, the, the news release talks about a consistent level of care. Well, due care means that it will range from programme to programme according to how the TV companies can justify distress. I mean, we talk about unjustified distress. So what is justified distress? It still needs the TV companies to use their common sense and cooperation. And I think if the sort of stories we heard from the people who work for or were gophers for um, the Kyle show and indeed Love Island or anything to go by, I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. Well, that's the difficulty, isn't it? Because these programmes, uh, in part, rely on controversy. They rely on, for example, yeah. on, on Love Island and the old Kyle show, people getting uh, emotional in some way. Uh, yeah. if, if, if the rules are going to, I mean, the, the wording is unjustified distress or anxiety. Uh, if, if you're going to rule that out, some of these programmes aren't going to survive. Well, yes, but th- there is one strange rider. I mean, there, there are two things, uh, I, I think, very quickly, Eddie. The, they add a note in their news release to say that Ofcom, they want to ensure that the proposed new rules do not make programmes less likely to feature people with vulnerabilities, as there is a clear public interest in their representation on TV and radio. So there is already now a a justification for distress to some people with vulnerabilities. Because part of the inherent problem here is calling them reality shows. They're not reality shows. They're they're television. They're pretending it's reality. It's it's like American wrestling. And people can get hurt particularly vulnerable people emotionally in this, and you, you can't police every aspect of that sort of output. Would you have liked Ofcom to do more or less than they've done here, given that, I mean, this is in the news partly because, as we know, uh, two previous cast members of Love Island have taken yeah. their own lives? Yeah, indeed. I mean, I'd, I'd, as, as I say, I'd be fascinated to see how due care is taken to protect the dignity of people who want to go on Love Island. I mean, it would take a fair while to do that. I mean, in the past, Ofcom's responses to complaints about people being bullied and, uh, and similar tended to put an emphasis on the viewer, the person watching being assured that help is at hand, rather than knowing for sure that it actually is at hand. So I I would like them to have gone a bit further with this and to actually say, you know, yes, this sort of programme is acceptable and passes the the generally accepted standards uh, barrier, which is what the rule was before, or these programmes are not acceptable. But but this is... I don't think this is going to clear up anything at all. Um... As for the the possible knock-on effects of this, is it possible that these rules could could impact uh, news and documentaries in ways that Ofcom may not have intended? I, I think there is a problem of uh, unintended consequences here, uh, simply because you are looking to try and regulate something that is effectively unregulatable.
if people don't use their common sense. And, uh, and that is a problem. So it might. I, I would hope it doesn't. But there is always a possibility of sort of putting up rules and fences for, for, for something that's actually like juggling with soot. You, you will actually prevent some things that shouldn't be prevented. And you, you're absolutely right. Martin, thank you. Martin Campbell, media advisor and former chief advisor to Ofcom, which regulates uh, British broadcasters, including, as I say, LBC.